websites. Even if you're just wanting to learn how to create an application for the iPhone, it's still good knowledge to learn how to create a website itself as I'm learning in my own personal project. So bring in Hacksaw Academy. With 11 projects to choose from and 20 hours of content and more content being added monthly using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, it's a great place to start learning how to create your own websites. Projects such as the Responsive Design Project as well as the Pretty Forms Project. I followed those projects and they're great. And the best part is you don't need extra software, everything is done right inside of the website itself. So if you want to join Hacksaw Academy with over 5,000 other students, at $25 a month you can go ahead and give Hacksaw Academy a try but if you want to give it a try, there is a 14-day free trial in the description down below, which you can go ahead and test it out yourself. Anyway, big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. On to the tutorial. How's it going everybody? Jared here, and today we're going to be looking at how to use custom cells inside of your table view using nib files. Now I'm not saying this is the best nor the only way to get custom cells inside of your table view, but this is just one way to do it. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just open up Xcode 8, create a new Xcode project, and this will be a single view application. Then go ahead, click next, our product name. You can go ahead and call this whatever you want. I'm just gonna call mine table uh, custom cells. And then uh, with your language, set that to Swift, device is universal. Go ahead, click next, and create. And now that you have all this set up, let's go ahead, head over here to our main.storyboard, and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that view controller that's gonna be on there as soon as my computer decides to work properly. And then we're just gonna go ahead and delete this view controller that's on our scene. And then the next thing we're going to add is just the table view controller. So just go ahead, add that onto your scene like so. And then we also want this to be the initial view controller. So this is over here on your attributes inspector. Just say is initial view controller. That way you don't get a blank screen when you build and run the application. Now let's go ahead and head over here to our view controller.swift. And I'm just gonna go ahead and change the class name of this to a table view controller and give this the super class of a UI table view controller. And this allows us, so if we head back over here to our main.storyboard, we click on our table view controller, we can head over here to our uh, identity inspector right here. And then with our class, we can just go ahead and set this equal to our table view controller. So now anything that we add onto this view controller.swift file will then edit that table view that we just created. Now let's go ahead and delete everything that we have inside of that table view controller class right there. And now that we have this set up as far as I want it right now, let's go ahead and say file, new, and then file. And then this is going to be a Cocoa touch class right here. Go ahead, click next, and with this you have the class name, so I'm going to actually set this equal to my table view cell 1, and then the subclass of, and you want to make sure that this is a UI table view cell. And also create nib file, make sure that is checked marked because we do want that nib file because we're going to be working with it. Then language, swift, go ahead, click next, and create. And then it creates these two files for you. So you have your table view cell one dot nib file and your table view cell one dot swift file. Now with this nib file right here, you can see that this is the cell that you're going to be editing things on. So with this, let's go ahead and add some objects onto this. So with this, I'm going to add an image view because what I want to have is something that displays an image like this and then has some text at the bottom. So I'm going to also add a UI label. And I'm just gonna put that right onto my scene like so. And then I'm gonna go over here to my attributes inspector, center the text inside of that label, and then let's set up some constraints. So I'm gonna right click or control click and drag from this image view over here to my content view. I'm gonna say leading, trailing, and top space to container margin. And that's what we're doing so far with this image view. Go ahead, hit enter. And then with this label now, let's go ahead, right click or control click and drag from that over here to our content view. We're gonna say leading, trailing, and then we want the bottom spaced in container margin. And we should be good to go. And then let's go ahead and add some spacing between this and this. So we're gonna say vertical spacing. Now one last thing I wanna do is make sure that this label, uh, let's make sure that the height is always the same. So I'm clicking and dragging from the label to the label and making sure that the height is properly set. This image view, you can make sure that the height stays the same, but I think it's good to have just the UI image view without any constraints on the height. But you can of course do whatever you want. Now let's go ahead and continue on and I'm gonna create another cell. So I'm gonna say file, new, file. This is of course going to be a Cocoa Touch class. Go ahead, click next. And this will be my table view cell Two, subclass table view cell uh, also create nib file language swift go ahead click next and create and now that we have that all done let's go ahead go over here to our view table view cell 2 dot nib file and with this I'm going to go ahead and add a label as well as I want to add an image view as well 
but I'm just gonna make sure that the placements of these are a little bit different. So with this image view right here, I'm just gonna make sure that it is a square aspect ratio. So you can see that by the pixels that it's 109 by 109, and that's how I wanted it all set up. So now also with this label, I'm also gonna take that, move that over there and stretch it out to the end and we're good to go. Now let's go ahead and take this image view, right click or control click and drag from this over here to our content view. We wanna have leading, we want top space and bottom space. Go ahead, hit enter, and then we want some horizontal spacing between this and our label. And then we want to have some trailing space between our label and the content view. Now one more thing to keep in mind is that this image view right here doesn't really have a, a, a aspect ratio set to it. It's just how we set it up at first. So we also wanna have it, so it maintains that one by one aspect ratio. Then with this label, there's one last little error and we just need to say center vertically in container. And we are good to go with those. Now let's go ahead and hook them up into our Swift files that we have right here. So with this, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete everything that I have inside of my table view cell uh, class right here. And now we can go ahead and hook up our image view and our label over to that. So I'm going to right click, control click and drag from this image view over to our project. And I'm going to go ahead and call this my main image view. Connect that. And then we have our label here as well. And I'm going to make sure that this is my main label and connect. And we're good to go with both of those. Now let's go ahead and do the exact same thing with our table view cell one. So I'm going to go ahead over here to my table view cell one dot nib and let's go ahead and connect these. So with this one, I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything that's inside of this class right here. I'm gonna right click or control click and drag and do the exact same thing that I did before. So main image view, and then this last one, of course, is going to be my main label. Now, one thing that you wanna keep in mind is these names can be the same on your table view cell one and table two, uh, view cell two. It doesn't actually affect anything. So if you name them the na same thing like I did, uh, you can go ahead and do that. But now we have these cells and now let's go ahead and add them onto our table view. So the way we do this is I'm gonna go ahead and type in table view and we want the number of rows in section and we also want the table view uh, cell for row at index path. And one last thing I'm gonna add is the table view height for row at index path. Because as you can see that with this uh, table view cell one, it's a different height than that which we have of our table view cell two. So we wanna make sure that we do that, that we have that all set up properly. So let's head back over here to our viewcontroller.swift and we're gonna set all of this up in just a minute, but let's go ahead and create a structure in which all of our cells are going to follow. So what this means is we have the cell, what kind of cell are we gonna be using? Are we using cell one or cell two? We also have our image, so this is the image that we're gonna be using, of course, and then we have our text. So this is gonna be the text that's displayed in front in our label. So let's go ahead and create a structure. And with this struct, we have name and fields. So the name of this structure, I'm just gonna go ahead and call this my cell data, like so. And then inside of the cell data right here, of course, as I just mentioned, we have the type of cell. So I'm gonna say let cell colon, and then this is gonna be equal to an integer. And then I'm also going to say let my text colon and I'm gonna set this equal to a string and then lastly I just want my image so I'm gonna say let my image colon and I'm gonna set this equal to a UI image now we can go ahead and set this up by going down here inside of our table view controller let's go ahead and create our view did load function and actually right before we do that let's go ahead and create an array of this cell data that we created so we're gonna go ahead and say var my array of cell data equal, you can of course change that name if you want, uh, will be equal to open bracket, close bracket, and we're just gonna go ahead and put in our cell data. And there you have it. And then lastly, we just wanna add open close parentheses like so. And then now inside of our view did load, as I'm coming back to this, we just go ahead and say array of cell data will be equal to, and I'm gonna go ahead and set this equal to open bracket, close bracket, our cell data, open parentheses. And with this, uh, as you can see, it actually doesn't fill it all out for me. Sometimes it does. I think this is probably a beta error, but I have to go ahead and type in everything, which is kind of a drag, but let's go ahead and do it. So we say cell colon, and then this is going to be an integer. So I'm gonna set this equal to one for my first time uh, because that's just what I wanna test out as. And then I'm gonna go hit comma text colon, and then this is going to be some text that I put in there. We'll set that up in just a minute. And then lastly, we want the image colon, and then I'm gonna actually set this equal to an image literal. That way I can just grab something out of my assets.xc assets. 
and then we're good to go there. Now let's go ahead, hit comma, and I'm gonna make sure that I have three of these cells. So I'm gonna copy that, paste it three times. I'm gonna tab these in to make things a little bit less confusing. And there you have it. So we have three cell datas in here. Now with this first one, I'm gonna go ahead and save cell one, and then I'm gonna set the second one equal to a cell two, and I'm gonna switch back to one. And then with our text here, you can go ahead and set that equal to whatever you want. And then with the image here, let's go ahead and go into our assets.xc assets. And I'm just going to click and drag one of these random images that are on my screen. And we're good to go there. So this is the image that I want to use apparently. So let's go back over here to our uh, viewcontroller.swift. And I'm going to go ahead, go over here to the image literal, double click on that, add that in there. Man, I love these image literals. I mean, they're so nice. <laughs> they're so nice. Okay, and then let's just go ahead and there's an extra comma at the end, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And then now we have our array of cell data. So now we can go ahead and take that cell data and apply it towards our cells. Now the way we do this is I'm going to go down here into my number of rows in section, and I'm just going to return the value. I thought that was self row index path, but we need to go ahead and return the value of my array of cell data dot count. So I'm counting the amount of cells that are in here and I'm returning that as the number of rows that we're having inside of our table view. Good to go. Now let's go ahead go down here and we're gonna say table view cell for row at index path. Let's go ahead and apply some variables into this. So with this one we want to go ahead and say if our array of cell data open bracket, close bracket, and inside of here we can say our index path dot row. So what this means is we're going to be circulating throughout all the data that's inside of here. So for the row one, or for the row zero actually, it's going to be this first one. Or for row two, it's going to be this one. And then for row three, it's going to be this one. So on and so forth. So we're going to go ahead, continue on, and we say if array of cell data index path dot row dot, and then we can grab one of these variables that are inside of here. And of course, as you can probably guess, we're going to grab the cell. So we're going to go ahead and say if the cell is equal equal to one, then we're going to do this stuff in here. And then let's go ahead and add an else if, and then we can just go ahead and just take this copy and paste that right down here and just switch that out with a two. Now, of course, after this, it's still wanting a table view cell no matter what. So you also need to add one else statement. And this is just going to be your default. Say, if this cell doesn't exist and this cell doesn't exist, then we're just gonna default to this else statement in which it, we're probably just gonna set over to uh, cell one. But either way, it, it requires a return value of a UI table view cell. So that's why you need that else statement there. But let's go ahead and set our cell equal to that of one of these nib files. So we can go ahead and say let my cell equal, and I'm going to set this equal to my bundle dot main dot load nib named, and I'm going to go ahead and load the nib named, and this will be my uh, table view cell uh, one, because we're working with the cell one right here. Owner, we're going to go ahead and set that equal to self. And then options, we're going to go ahead and set that equal to nil because we don't want any options. Unless, of course, you do. I'm not judging. And then after this, we want to go ahead and say dot first. Now, the reason we're doing that is we're grabbing the view that's inside of there. If you were to just go and say this, you're just grabbing all the views that are inside of there. And it just wants that one view. So that's why we have to grab that specific view that's inside of there. Uh, otherwise, it just doesn't work. And we just do this to fix it. And then now after this, we want to go ahead and say as and then we're going to set this equal to my table view cell one. So this is actually referencing that table view cell one dot swift file that we have right here. And the beauty of this is you can actually go ahead and say cell dot, and then you can go ahead and grab the image view or the label that's inside of that and that we set up earlier. So we can go ahead and say my cell dot main image view dot image will be equal to, and I'm going to go ahead and set this equal to my array of cell data, open bracket, close bracket, for the index path dot row. And then you're just going to go ahead and grab that image. So I'm going to say dot image. And then now let's go ahead and take that label. So I'm going to say cell dot main label dot text. And I'm going to set that equal to my array of cell data, uh, open bracket, close bracket, index path dot row. And then we're of course going to be grabbing that text out of there. So dot text. And then now we can go ahead and just do this with our cell two. We can go ahead, copy and paste that, except we want this to be load nib name table view cell two. 
and then this is going to be as a table view cell two as well. Now, actually I named something wrong right here. So this is cell dot main and this should actually be label. There we have it. So now we have cell dot main label. I apparently just named it differently between our cell one and our cell two, but that's perfectly fine. You just need to fix it. Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna take this and I'm also gonna put that right inside of the else statement right down here. And yeah, there you have it. So now we have cell one and cell two loading into our project. Now, this isn't going to allow it to build right yet. Uh, right now, let's go ahead, take our first cell that we have right here, everything inside of there. We're gonna take that and put that inside of our else statement. Uh, you can make whatever cell you want your default, but this is gonna be my default. My cell one is going to be my default. Now, let's go ahead, continue on, and I want to set the height for each of these cells. So the way I'm gonna do this is first off, I'm gonna grab the height of our nib files. So I'm gonna click on this file that I have right here, head over here to my size inspector. And as you can see, it has a row height of 250. So I wanna make sure that it returns that value accordingly. So I'm gonna head back over here to my viewcontroller.swift. And we're gonna go ahead and pretty much grab everything that we have right here. We're gonna copy that, paste that, and just delete all the data that's inside of there. And that was just a quick fix. So essentially we just have if array of cell data is equal to one is equal to two, and then we're gonna return a CG float value or the height value accordingly. So let's go ahead and say return, and I'm gonna go ahead and return the value of 250 if that works. And then we're gonna go ahead, go back over here to our table view cell two, and then we're gonna grab the size of that, which is 109. So we're gonna go back over here to my viewcontroller.swift and just return the value of 109, like so. And then of course for your default, uh, I set that equal to cell one, so I'm gonna go ahead and return the default of 250, like so. And for some reason it didn't add override, that's why I'm getting this error, so go ahead and add that. But either way, there you have it. Uh, that is how you would add the height on two each of these cells, and we also have all of our cells set up with our table view. So that is great. Now let's go ahead and build and run this and see what we got. Well, I guess it looks like I need to restart Xcode and try this again. And here we have it. So here is our table view. And as you can see, they're loading up in custom heights as well as they have uh, their custom look to them. So yeah. There we have it with our custom cells. Now, one last thing I wanna point out is with our image views right here. If you're looking to fix this, just go back over here to your table view cell one.nib or and cell two. And what we're gonna do is just open up the side. We're gonna open up our attributes inspector. We're gonna change the content mode to aspect fill. And then with this, I'm also gonna say clip to bounds. That clips the images so that they don't overflow onto the label. And then now let's go back over here to our table view cell two dot nib file, click on that image view. And of course this is going to be aspect fill as well and clip to bounds, make sure that is selected. Now let's go ahead, build and run this and it should look a little bit better. And there you have it. So now we have the proper aspect ratio for that image that we have. And also we have everything set up properly. Anyway, there you have it. Anyway, there you guys have it. That's how you use nib files to create your own custom cells inside of your table view. If you found this helpful, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more videos like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. If you want to catch up with me on the day to day, go ahead and follow me on Twitter. Now, if you really love this video and you want to help support me make more videos in the future, be sure to check out my Patreon page in the which you can pledge $2 every week to help support these videos that I make. And you also get all the project files and a bunch of other things. And if we hit $200 every week, I'll be sure to get rid of all sponsorships. As well as I promise to do at least three videos every week. I actually hope to get into the daily realm so that I can produce like five videos every week but we'll see how that goes. For now, I'm promising two. If we hit 200, three. Either way, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. How's it going, everybody? <laughs>